Are you a composer who's hungry to learn more about the craft? Want to learn how to master a simple technique that will unlock new potential in your music? Today I'm going to be showing you what feathered beaming is, and three do's and don'ts of how to use it in your own compositions like a pro. Let's get started! This video is going to be divided into four major parts. The first being a brief overview of what exactly feathered beaming is, followed by a do and don't section each containing three do's and don'ts. And lastly, a very short how-to for Finale and Sibelius so you can execute this technique seamlessly upon completion of this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe to learn more about composition with us on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, what exactly is this feathered beaming technique? As you probably know, the beam is a very large bar, or set of bars, that not only group quavered notes together by beat, but also dictate the subdivision of each note in the set. Note that a quavered note is simply any note with a flag, like an eighth or a sixteenth note. For example, a single beam with four notes grouped together would indicate four eighth notes, two beams would indicate sixteenths, and so on. These groupings are essential for the legibility of strong beats within a composition, but they also have their own sets of limitations in certain case situations. Let's say you wanted to write a musical passage that repeats a single pitch that gradually divides more and more until a certain point of climax, which creates the illusion of accelerating over time. Here's what this interpretation would sound like in context played on a flute. Although to some extent this portrays the basic ideology behind the passage, the divisions don't increase smoothly nor continuously, but rather in stages. This can be shown by the red line that instead of being straight and continuous, is broken off into miniature plateaus. This can give off an undesirable definitive break between the increasing increments of notes. This is where feathered beaming comes into play. Feathered beaming breaks this barrier between notes and their durations, which allows the passage to truly increase in pace. It is notated by a straight primary beam, which beneath it has secondary beams that either grow out of or into the primary. The red line now becomes truly linear, covering a range of notes that is free of the constraints of meter. Let's have a listen to this improved version, with the change being incredibly subtle but rather effective. Now this is truly progressive increase of pace. It's like having a true pitch bend instead of just moving up a chromatic scale. All of the in-betweens are now present moving forward in the passage. These in-betweens loosen the sense of meter within the piece, which gives the piece more of an impromptu, natural feeling. Now that you have a solid understanding of what feathered beaming is, it's time to reveal my do's and don'ts of the technique. The first do that is an absolute must for any serious composer is to define the technique, both in the composer's notes section of your score and with the actual part itself. Being a more modern technique, it may not be interpreted correctly right off the bat, especially in youth ensembles. So a quick note, perhaps with an accompanying image, in your composer's notes section, and a text marking above the phrase that reads, gradually play faster, slower, faster than slower, etc., will make your feathered beaming section obvious and playable without a second thought. The second do for feathered beaming is to orchestrate and instrument carefully using this technique. Although this won't ruin your composition, there are absolutely instruments that can execute this technique better than others. For example, the flute is an especially good choice for this technique since flute players don't have anything in their mouths while playing, therefore freeing up their tongues to rapidly repeat notes in double and triple tongues. This small do can really allow you to maximize comfort for your performers and clarity for your melodic interests. And the third do for feathered beaming is to be creative in your endeavors with using it. Don't limit it to single pitch repetition, experiment with moving passages that slowly accelerate or decelerate to give your solo writing more of a natural sound. Don't click away just yet, because knowing the do's is nothing without equally understanding the don'ts. The first don't is one that I've been completely frustrated with myself in the past, and that's to avoid writing feathered beams across bar lines and strong beats. There's really no clean way of doing this. It can be done by breaking down beams and adding dashed lines if you must, but it won't look pretty. I would just stick to expanding measures to work bar lines around your feathered beams. You and your performers will thank yourself later. Now don't number two goes hand in hand with do number two. 
which in this case is to avoid writing feathered beaming for instruments that can't clearly articulate rapid tonguing. Let's take a rather extreme example like the tuba for instance. If you wanted to write a slowly accelerating or decelerating passage for the tuba, it would be poorly conceived since the muddy sound of the tuba won't clearly present each accelerating note, and the player would almost definitely have a difficult time physically playing each note. In short, leave the feathered beaming to the instruments that are dexterous with their articulations. The third and final don't of feathered beaming is to avoid writing feathered beams across multiple instruments with the expectation that it will sound completely in time across them. When you create randomness, you really create randomness. If you want to have multiple voices playing the feathered passage at the exact same time, it just won't happen precisely. It will be close, but likely never exactly in unison. Now for a brief how-to on how to construct this technique within a notation software. I'm going to use Finale. So you open up the Special Tools palette, which is the wrench on the main tool palette, and on the Special Tools palette you're going to want to pick the Beam Angle tool, which as you can guess, angles beams. You then drag the bars to the angle and position you want them at, and there you have your feathered beam. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you've learned anything today, be sure to hit subscribe and tap on that bell icon for more music theory and composition tips in the future. Until then, I'll see you next time.